Good morning, good morning, how are you? I prayed for quite a while in the bed for a lot of you, for the church, for our world, for our nation, for our leaders, for all of our people that are in public service, uh, for wisdom, for grace, for strength, for direction. I just prayed and prayed to pray for our church. I pray for people struggling with finances. I pray for people that have loved ones that have died recently. I pray for people that are, are in the hospital right now, battling all kinds of things. There's just so many needs out there, so much to pray for. And I urge you to pray one for another as the Bible admonishes. And, um, and so I, I often, that's what I do is I, I'll pray and and I was laying, laying there praying for a while and meditating and thinking. God brought some scriptures I'll share with you and something to my mind. But uh, one of the things that came to my mind was that I was recently watching Brad Paisley uh, sing the song uh, In the Garden. And he started cracking up and couldn't sing it. He kept stopping and starting because he was so emotional. I remember my dad doing that when he was alive. And um, he was singing a song, One Day at a Time, Lord Jesus. And, you know, you can get touched with my songs, can't we? And so it made me think about uh, those words. He walks with me and talks with me and tells me I'm his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, no other has ever known. And coming to the garden alone and thinking about the morning and the words of Jesus. When, he, when the word records, rather, that Jesus was up early in the morning and went to the pray and how often he would go away and pray and he sometimes recorded he stayed up all night and prayed he told us the secret of the power to 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 fight the darkness and do spiritual warfare and cast out demons and heal people and everything else that he did to dispel darkness to give water to a person that was thirsty that they would never drink again spiritual living water and uh so you know i thought of that um and it, ca it came from, from him saying, oh, this kind goes out by, by prayer and fasting, telling you that you don't spend time with God and his word. That's our source. That's our water source. That's our power. Uh, that's our help. And so, uh, uh, you know, that's what we need, we need to have that. So got the thinking about my backyard during that time. He's uh, talking about the garden. And I thought about the flowers my wife plants out here and they're beautiful and how much she enjoys them, how much effort she puts into them, making them beautiful. And, um, and you know, our house had rock in it, a lot of the backyard and had a lot of rock in the yard and just a little bit of grass, a lot of rock, a lot of rock. It's hard to keep the weeds out. And having grandkids, I thought I'll put some sod in there, take that rock out of there and just always just weed it anyway and uh, make a nice place that you'd want to come and enjoy. And so we did that. I, I'll, I'll try to turn this around, see if I can show you some of this backyard to where the grok was. You can see the new sod. Hopefully I've got it aimed right because I don't know how to flip my phone around. But there, there's the sod area, you know. And so uh, hopefully hopefully you're getting that. I'll have to look at the I'll look at it in a minute when I get done. But in our backyard, it's a beautiful day in the morning. Here's the trees. I've just got a lot of trees back here. There's nothing behind us uh, for quite a ways. There's another road over there. But anyway, that's uh, just kind of a little, sol you know, it makes me think of having solitude, just like Jesus when no one's around, no one's up. You're just out here alone with the birds, with nature, and with God. And you can hear God and get filled full of God. And the two verses that came to my mind, well, one of them was the one, you know, just many of the verses that talks about Jesus getting up early, some of his prayers, prayers for his disciples, that the word of God would sanctify them and, and that the word of God is truth and all of that. And realizing that, um, that you know, that we need, we need to be full of God with, his, with prayer, by prayer and by the word and full of the spirit and, and uh, full, of, full of power. So just thought I'd come out here and record these thoughts for you. And uh, 
the one thing that, that challenged me is two, two, two passages that I want to share. The first one is just spiritually to be so full that this happens, that the psalmist says, and it's the psalm where he talks about the words of the Lord being sweeter, God's word being sweeter than honey, sweeter than the honeycomb, more precious than silver, finer than gold, uh, you know, and uh, the presence of God and God being with us. And at the very last verse of that Psalm, it says, let the words of my mouth be acceptable unto you, our Lord, our God, my God, my, so no, it says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you, O God, my strength and my redeemer. The words of my mouth and, and even my thoughts, meditation of my heart, inmost being. But that does not happen without getting along with God, filling up with his word and having the strength of God in us. So we need it so much, church. We need to be full of power and faith so we can pray. The Wiccans on Father's Day are going to be having their big deal, praying and all of that and calling on, you know, Satan and everything else with witch power and whatever they do. And they believe in that, I guess. I think they really believe in it. We better believe in it. We better be praying because our, our nation and our families and this world needs God's people to rise up and fight in the realm of the spirit. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, Paul writes, but principalities and powers and wickedness and uh, in high places. And we're in a war, a spiritual war it talks about. And, and it goes on and says, put on that, put on that gear, put on the the soldier war, you know, gear, the helmet of salvation, put your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel, the breastplate of righteousness so the enemy you don't believe is lies that God won't forgive you and that you're dirty and, and put the word of God where the righteous acts come out that we are doing what God has asked us to do to, to be with people and I mean to help people, to care for people, to um, just everything you do that's righteous acts. Uh, to people as you interact with people and, and, and living holy. Breastplate of righteousness to take the sword of the sword of the truth, the word of God, the sword of the spirit that we can fight with because this truth is what fights. And that's being undermined in our nation and undermined in our world. And people that call themselves Christians don't even believe in the absolute authority of the word anymore. But it's absolute because God doesn't change. He's just, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, forever. The Bible says his words abide forever and they do not change. And his moral truth is absolute morality of truth and it doesn't change. The book is the authority, not you. You may not like it. You may not feel right about it. It may not make sense to you. Someone may try to spin it, change it, whatever they want to do. But the word of God is the same. And I just beg you to let the word be your rule of faith and conduct, that you would live it out and walk in it and believe it and be full of it and, and let it impact you so that what comes out of your mouth and what goes into your brain is acceptable to God. Any other passage? That I, that I thought about was James, where he says, this spiritual war that we need to be praying is, uh, uh, James, I think it's in chapter four, it says, it says, submit yourself one to another, uh, uh, and submit yourself to God and to each other, but it says, uh, humble yourself, resist the devil, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Humble yourself in the sight of God, he will lift you up. He go, it says uh, that, uh, that he resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. And uh, and so, you know, if we think we can do this on our own, we, we think we're all got all our little religious systems and our programs down, and it's gonna make a difference, it isn't. If we don't know, we can't do nothing without God and go to God in prayer and cry out to God and get on our knees. And if Jesus had to go to him early in the morning and go out in the desert place and pray and say, you, this nothing happens without prayer, without fasting, without, without the power of God. Jesus knew it was from the Father because of what his prayer life was like. Let me tell you something. This world ain't going to change unless his people rise up and pray and seek his face and go after God. So I urge you people, let's, let's be the church and fight. Fight for our, our world. Fight for the lost. Fight for the religious the religious dead. Fight for those that are have doctrine but not Christ. Fight, pray, live it, witness. 
let there be an anointing on you, a fire on you that impacts people. Let there be something different about you that people can sense and they can't explain because you've been in the presence of God. You have the smell of his spirit. You have the fire of his spirit. People can tell that you've been with God and may it impact you so much that it changes your words. It changes your heart. It's your full of God's truth and compassion and gracious and kind and loving and gentle and full of joy and peace and your long suffering and your you have faith and you're faithful and you're good and you're gentle. Let that all be what happens so that the people of God rise up and make a difference in our world. Early in the morning, I will seek you, the psalmist said. Early in the morning, I will come to you. I will desire you. So we come to God early in the morning Yes, yes, yes. Where the, the garden with flowers. The beauty of his landscape. The beauty of all the world that belongs to God that he's made with his power. That's our God. He's a mighty God. Hey. I talk longer than the rest of these pastors, but if you don't like it, you don't have to listen to it, right? <laughs> yep. I uh, talk a long time. I think I might just talk a little bit longer just to annoy you. But before I do, I just want to pray, okay? I love all y'all, and I pray that y'all would be have a great day and that you would rise up and be a mighty church in Jesus' name. Uh, Sunday, we have our last pre-recorded service. We were doing those to protect our tech team so they wouldn't on top of each other. And hopefully the last Sunday of June or the, the latest, the first Sunday of July, will be live with, pe with people in sanctuary actually streaming the service as it's live. So come see us if you can. If you want to, you feel safe. Oh, we would love to have you at 8, 10, or 12. And uh, we appreciate you being the church. Father, in Jesus' name, let the word of God dwell richly in all your people, God. Let it be the engrafted word as James talks about, saving their soul, saving their, renewing their mind. God, through your word, just let there be a renewing, God. Bring people away from themselves and the sin they're sliding into. Let faith rise. Let hope arise. Meet every need, Lord. Help us as a family of God meet every need and help each other. Be the church and do prayer and spiritual warfare to come against Satan in the name of Jesus, the blood of Christ. And Satan, you must flee in the name of Jesus, and there will be no wicked power. There will be no power of Satan that will overcome your church. In the name of Jesus, we say victory. Thank you for it, God. Bless, bless in the name of Jesus. Bless, bless, bless your people. Protect them, God. Put a covering around them, God. Put the blood of Christ over their doorposts, God. Bless them in Jesus' name. Heal them, Lord, that those need healing. Provide for those that need jobs. God, minister to those that are having struggles in their marriage. Spare them, Lord. Help them, God. Help them with children that are rebellious. Help them, Lord. You have wisdom in parenting, God. And may we, may we be the family of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, happy Father's Day this week. This is coming up, and if you... Your dad is gone and you've lost him. We, we know, we all know the pain of that. It still hurts after 28 years for me. If you never had a father that was really a good father, remember you have a God, our father, and there are spiritual fathers and grandfathers that you can have. I'm one to many people that I, that besides my two natural born children, and uh, you can be Sue because people need you. So men be men, be good, good to each other, uncles, <laughs> grandfathers, Fathers, be good men, be strong men in God, rise up, be men of faith, be men of courage, and be strong. Do not fear. We're going forward in the name of Jesus. Y'all have a good day. Call me anything you need me. Call, just call me up, okay? Call me up. My cell phone is 778-4524. You can call me or text me anytime.